And this thing is turning, and I bet you I'm live, and it's going to be like 22 seconds when I look at it. So I'm going to go for it. All right, everybody, it's Cajun Coin Hunter, a.k.a. Boudreaux. How y'all are today? Hope everybody had a good weekend, good week last week. And we're going to see what's going on with this counter here. Hmm. Let's Let me check my other side here. Yeah, here we go. 45, 50 seconds. Okay. I was right. I don't know why it does that sometime. Oh, well. Like I said, I hope everybody had a good weekend. We got a few people in the house tonight already. What's up, Mr. Sergio? Breezy's Bike Shop. How you doing? Bill Beckett. Hello, sir. Mater's in the house tonight. 710 was here at 2 o'clock. He was here early. Grilling and chilling with Mojo. Afternoon. Bon après-midi. Bon après-midi. Luke Duke outdoors. How you doing? And we got a few other people in the house tonight, too. This evening, I should say. We got the well-known Mr. Russ Jones, a.k.a. Smoky Ribs Barbecue. How y'all doing? <laughs> How's it going, people? Everything's going here. Except for a little cold, like I had mentioned before, but Yeah. Ain't gonna let that get me down. No. Yeah, that's going around bad, man. So you mentioned you're gonna come out, you're gonna make another video probably tomorrow. Yeah, I'm shooting a video tomorrow and I'm just getting uh taking notes and make sure that we leave here with everything I need to shoot my video. I always make a list every week for everything I need to take. All my stuff is over there at my son's house, all my cameras, all the cooking, uh, whatever I'm going to cook on is already over there, but I have to bring things to cook with me. So, right. What's up, Mojo? And as y'all could tell by the noise in the background, Missy's beating up the stove. Why am I the only wow. one on the screen here? Well, I had you presented. Oh, uh, okay. You know, when I, when I introduce my my guest on panel, that's how I do it, uh, I, one at a time. I got and you. here we go with Mater. Oh, Mater's still muted and busy. Hey, Mater, how you doing? We'll come back to you after a while. Keep on working, brother. <laughs> Keep on working. He's using the hell out of them uh, cobalt tools. Yeah, he is. All right, everybody. Uh, that link that I just put in the chat, that is the link for Smoky Ribs and Barbecue. Y'all go check him out. Check his channel out. He's got an awesome cooking channel. Appreciate and he's got a few good. stories. Uh, in there too about how it came to be with this and stories about his buddies and what they did and how they got the food the product they're cooking and stuff like that he's also got some sponsors and some neat little tools and stuff to help you cook along the way oh he's yeah got that also i like those thermometers man <laughs> yeah yeah yeah, I'm yeah. Therm i am thermometer poor Mm -hmm. <laughs> hey, Dave, um, Dave, lawnmower detective. How you doing, morning, me? I hadn't seen you in a little bit. I hadn't seen you live lately. Hope everything's all right over there. What's up, Luke? Luke Duke. Luke Duke Outdoors. Yep. Luke and Bo Duke. <laughs> yeah. Like Bo Duke's over here, uh, not far from me. Yeah, that's, that's, where, that's where he's living at now. That's what I've heard. Yeah, he's got a studio and all that. For that big flood of 2016, his studio recording studio got uh, took a little beating. Oh, really? Had to get everything to high ground and oh yeah, I met him over here at my cousin's radio station. Okay. He uh, yeah, he's down to earth guy. Uh, he comes over here about two, about two times, three, three times a year. 
he'll okay. come over in town and uh just walk in the door to station and you know how's everybody doing and that and then you know it's a the station is an open door they have an open door policy for any musicians or up and coming new if you got a new cd out a new recording uh just walk through the front door of the studio and boom you on you on the air yeah, yeah. you know it's a locally owned uh radio station it's not privately owned uh corporate owned i should say it's local down home people that's from here that own it play cajun music swamp pop country uh older rock that you can actually listen to you know and they go by what people want hey mark how you doing bud twisted v-twin garage is in the house yeah, my buddy Keith Jenkins from uh, Madisonville, he's met Bo Duke uh, from the Dukes of Hazard. It's right, John Snyder. Two, yeah, yeah, John Snyder. He met him uh, a couple of years ago. He was posting some pictures on Facebook, I reckon, right there in Louisiana somewhere. Yeah, uh, uh, he's right on the other side. His studio is right on the other side of Baton Rouge from okay. me, okay. from me. Where's he from originally? Do you know? Is he from Up in, uh, I think, South Carolina. I'm, I'm missing it by a few miles for sure. Okay. So it's either right. going to be North Carolina or Georgia, but I think it's South Carolina. Okay. And he was only 18. But maybe was doing something. <laughs> <laughs> he was only 18 years old. They weren't looking for nobody that young, but he lied about his age. It was mature. He was. He looked older. Uh, the Sunshine State, Florida. No, I mean the Shake and Bake State. Excuse me. California. I think so. Uh, I don't I know. know. I can't Google it, so I don't know. Yeah, I thought I had read that he was from uh, or heard. Hey, Sam's Garage. How you doing, Mona? Me. I want to say I heard he was from, and that was him saying this. I want to say he talked about South Carolina, you know, the East Coast. I want to say, you know, I don't know if he was talking about somebody else or. I know he ain't from Georgia. That's, I don't know for a fact. All right, I got to mute. Well, since he started that series years ago, I imagine he's been all kind of places, you know. But uh, what brought him to Louisiana? Do you know? Did he say or the music? The music, okay. The music, and uh, he's been in Louisiana before that. Okay. And uh, land was cheap. You know, it's not like Nashville. You go to Nashville and buy land around there, and man, it's like thirty thousand an acre. You know, something like that. And hell, I think he's he got that stuff for like thousand dollars an acre. You know, if that eight hundred an acre, huh? Got a good head on his shoulders, then. Yeah, Andrew, what's for dinner, Cajun? Well, what's cooking with Cajun is uh, Miss Missy, the hostess of that channel. She is cooking a uh, boneless stuffed chicken, and I forget mm. what it's stuffed with. She said she mentioned it yesterday when she came from the store, and I it kind of choo -choo -choo, passed over my head. And some red beans and rice and smothered okra. Hmm. I want to. I want to do a. Uh, I've done it. I've got a stuffed boneless chicken on my channel where I did it on my drum smoker, and it was stuffed with boudin. But, oh yeah, yeah. But I bought, yeah. yeah, I bought that already ready to go. But I want to debone a chicken on my channel and then make my own boudin and stuff and take it from start to finish. I'm gonna oh, do. Okay. I, I'm going to do that at some point. I, I've had it on my list of things to do, but you know, that's a lot of work for some footage. <laughs> yeah, it is a lot of footage, but I think it would do pretty good if I was to do that. I think. Never know about these videos. Oh yeah, that would that would uh. Yeah, that, that would be an attraction right there. Uh, yeah. Boneless stuffed chicken. Uh, 
with Buddha, homemade Buddha. Oh yeah. yeah. Because oh, you yeah. know, a lot of our stuffed chickens down here are with Buddha. We had one uh two weeks ago, I think, or three weeks ago, and it was stuffed with Buddha. Yeah, yeah, that's good stuff, man. Heck and yeah. uh, she got that one from Eunice Poultry, and that's all they do over there is like boudin, cracklings, you know, chickens, uh, specialty meats, you know. Yeah, that's right. And there's Miss Missy right there in the chat, and she's right behind me, too. No, it was right behind me. She just passed by. <laughs> Let me see if I could aim the camera a little bit. There she is. Just caught the back of her. Uh, hey, Anthony. How's it going, bud? Andrew, uh, Dean, Mountain of Accord up there. And oh, he's talking, Tana. He, he's talking about that sun behind me. I might have to move that because everybody thinks I'm wearing something on top of my head. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Right and there's Mrs. Smokey. How you doing, Miss Smokey? She done left the room. <laughs> yeah. And uh, let's see. Tommy Handlin. How you doing over there in Ireland? Quint Nelson. Hello. I'll be right back. I'm going to put this beer in the fridge that she just dropped off here. Okay. Uh, let me see if I could get a hold of barbecue pit dog. If we get him up here. Message. Uh, let's see. Yeah, I got a little mini fridge right here to my left, and uh, I just keep it right there. That's real convenient. He was talking about that sun behind me. The last few videos I've done, we got a bull's head where we shoot videos. And normally I'm standing in front of it. And it looks like I got horns coming out of my head on my videos. I'm like, golly. It, <laughs> we didn't really consider that when we hung it. But I think most people get what it is. I sent, I sent Rob a link. That's something I haven't done on my channel yet. Making my own cracklings. Not like that. Not the way he's talking about like cooking them down in lard and stuff. My oh, last, mean, uh, huh? Which type of cracklings? Uh, Anthony. Louisiana or... Well, yeah, Anthony GM85 says, I make my own crackling. I buy the pork back fat and, and belly, belly fat. fat. Yeah. Yeah, well, it's the belly meat, the green bellies that you actually make the cracklings with. You can make cracklings with any part of the skin. Yeah. Like, say, if you have a, a front leg and you make a bunch of pork steaks yeah, and, and you trim the, the fat off, you know, the skin and fat, you know, you mm -hmm. make a circle. And then, but you leave a little meat on it and you cut them, you know, uh, you leave about a half inch of meat on the skin and the fat. And, you know, you're going to end up with a circle yeah. that steaks around. Well, kind of. And you, you cut one end, you just cut it in small pieces about, about that long. And you throw it in a, a little bit of grease in a pot, black iron pot. And boy, that's a good way to season pots too. Is oh, yeah. doing it is doing it that way, and there he is. He must What's have just up, got Rob? my my text message. Hey Rob, I like that hat you're wearing. <laughs> <laughs> I got one, I got one just like it. <laughs> How you doing, Rob? Me. I got I got to turn off the. Uh, I'm good, buddy. How y'all doing? Can't doing complain. Fine. I was River to rat. Off the uh, YouTube feed here. I'm, I'm done lost. How you doing, River Rat? Silent Silver. Hey, Breezy. Uh, 
So yeah, anyway, and you cut that that once you cut all that up, you uh put a little oil in the black pot, black iron pot, and right before it'll take a little time to get used to it. This is for somebody that's new to it though. When when you think they're about 80% done, it's going to render that fat out of there. And you're going to make lard more, you know, naturally. You're going to make your own lard. Sure. And you can yeah. save that. That's why you don't use a lot of uh, vegetable oil. You know, if you want pure lard, you know, but that vegetable oil is not going to matter. It's not going to mess up your hog lard. Yeah. But, uh, and then you take that batch out and then, if you got another batch, you cook that batch and you do it about 80% done. Then you'll take that batch out, put another batch in. You're letting those other batches cool off. You can actually put them in the refrigerator if you want to. And then when you, all your batch is finished, you just turn up the heat a little bit, get that grease temperature about another 10 degrees hotter. And you throw that cool, them cool cracklings down back in that hot lord and it's going to puff that skin up it's going to crackle it's right, going to puff right. that skin up to where it's almost like a pork rind yeah almost yeah. not quite sometimes you, you hit it just right and uh and then they'll finish cooking the rest of your crackling like that and it don't take long you know about five four five minutes on your second uh go round. then you take those out put your other ones in and you know same process if your lord smokes a little bit, don't worry about it. Just turn your heat down a little bit. Hey, boo. Yes, sir. How come you? How come you Cajuns are so skinny and eat so much fried food? Man, my metabolism is so fast. <laughs> <laughs> it is. My metabolism is so fast. I think because you eat fresh and you eat good, you know. Yeah, yeah. It's not a whole lot of uh, junk in it. Right. You know, I do eat a lot of fruits and vegetables, though. Well, that's I, good. I, I do, too. I don't eat enough of them, but I, I do like them a lot. You know, I'm getting older. I get I can't seem to lose no weight since I retired, but I can't hold that much food. If I ate like I used to eat, I'd weigh 300 pounds. I'm with, you know, well, I'm with you. I get full right now, too. You get yeah. that way, Russ? Oh, yeah, man. The older I get, the fuller I get quicker. Yeah, it's like exactly. once I take a, a eat a little bit and I've done lost my appetite, you know. Yeah, man, I'm like stuffed all of a sudden. Yeah, I'm you got exactly a long way to go, way. boo. I don't know, hey man, I'm, 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 I'm almost sixty. I'm a year away from sixty. I a am too. A couple of I'm months. Right there with you. I just so. turned sixty-four this week. Oh, oh really? Oh, yeah, okay. I didn't. I didn't even. Today, uh, two days. Ago. Happy if, birthday, if, Russ. Thank yeah. you. Didn't yeah, even belated know. happy birthday. If uh if I would have guessed, I would have said 57, 58. The Somebody's, way you move around though in the videos and stuff, you know. Well, that's because you're saying from the neck up, you're not seeing this poor old body. <laughs> no, I do. Yeah, like when you uh when you was doing the boils and stuff, the steaming and all that, you had oh, that yeah. camera set up and you and Jenkins and all, y'all were right there at the pot the pots. Ball oh yeah, pots. that's been a few years ago. Now I did yeah. do a crawfish ball back in February with my buddy Jeff, but I made Jeff do all the work. He's from Wisconsin. I said I'm gonna teach you how to boil crawfish, and so I was telling him what to add and when to add it. And he's over there. He's trying to listen to me. He's throwing it in the pot and everything. <laughs> we had a blast with that video. That that came out last February of this year. Is that the one? Uh... Y'all did a gumbo too, and he used a box. Or y'all used a box? Was that around his gumbo mix? No, or no, something? no. No, that, that was just a few weeks ago. That video is doing pretty good. We used a jarred, a, a jarred roux from Larry's, from my uh, Uncle Larry's right there in Louisiana, somewhere in Louisiana. Mm -hmm. And uh, man, I'll tell you what, that just really <laughs> surprised me how good that was. Cause I had well, just, I had just done a gumbo, you know, a week before that. And this tasted every bit as good. You know, I'm like, dang. Uh, yes, I am American Eagle holder. How you doing? 
I got to check my stove. I'll be right back. All right. No, you're Sorry. not invisible. It just takes me a little while to, to look at the chat. And uh, who else said come? Oh, Fish Guy. What's up, Fish Guy? <coughs> I got some water on the stove for tea, and uh, it was making noise, but just water coming off the lid. Oh, okay. Sweet tea? <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, yeah, we live on fucking sweet tea. Sorry. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it slips out every now and then. Yeah. No, uh, when you said uh, that guy in Wisconsin, uh, I, I remember you was up there somewhere, and I forget what time of the year it was. That was uh, July. July. Okay, uh, that was for the, around the holiday, the fourth or yeah. something. Yeah, that's okay. dead, dead broke barbecue man. I'll tell you what, his channel is like exploded. He is, he's got yeah. it all going on, Donnie Russ. I'd love to see that studio he's got. Oh yeah, I got to see it, and that's his garage. It's a, like a double garage, and that studio is only like not even a third of it. Like when you walk through the door or raise the main garage door, it's off here to the right, and then the rest of it is garage. That's where is he, it really? Oh yeah, and uh, you never know it looking at his videos because you're only seeing what he wants you to see with those cameras, yeah. and uh, he, he's done a lot of work. He has to because up there, man wisconsin gets so cold and snow and and he could not shoot videos like he wanted to so he's in there now he's got a furnace he's got an air condition for the summer months and uh he's got controlled lighting so he it's a lot better setup it took him about a year to get it the way he wants it you know but well, uh, all of that stuff helps oh yeah big time if you're gonna get serious about it you know and he he is and uh well, I remember, I think that was the, the guy. Y'all y'all cooked some, I think, it was, if I'm not mistaken, it was a gumbo. And y'all used a box. No. Whatever y'all cooked, y'all used a box. Zatarans. Oh, God. That wasn't Jeff. When Jeff was here, we did three videos. One of no, them was... No, you was up there. You was over at their place. Oh, up there. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yes, Jeff, uh, they bought that box Zataran stuff. You was in that live feed. That's where we were talking about it. That's right. Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah. Jeff made that, or his wife did. That's yeah, it was right. alive after y'all. Y'all had already cooked it. Yeah, you know, yeah. and done the eight and all that stuff. And I know? thought it was pretty darn good out of a box. It wasn't bad. I mean, you know, you know me. I was born and raised with from scratch stuff, but uh, it wasn't bad. <laughs> you know, I'm like, okay, well, y'all getting a taste of it anyway. It can get better for sure, but it wasn't bad. All right. I remember that. Uh, we now, me and Missy. Now, I was brought up. She was brought up. Hey, Miss Victoria Carter, how you doing? Gleason News, how you doing, buddy? Gran Turismo fan, what's up? GTF. Uh, hey. I was brought up making my own roux. Oh know? yeah, me too. Fifty fifty, flour and oil. You yep. know, yeah, flour and whatever else, but fifty fifty, no cheating. Right. You know, that's right. And if I do cheat, it's because I'm in a little bit of a hurry, you know, yeah. and it's not much, just a little doppel, you know, a right. pits like that. Missy was brought up like that, cooking her own roux, but nowadays we just buy it. Yeah. You know, in the jars, we buy Carrie's roux. We I buy Carrie's. It's made up locally right up the road from me, not I've, far. I've had it. Miles. You can't tell the difference. And the reason you can't tell the difference is because they do all the work for you. They're the ones that's browning it with oil and flour. It's the same stuff. It's just been in yeah. a, canned in a jar. You can't, you right. cannot tell the difference. Now this Uncle Larry's, that's more than just the roux. That's the roux and all the seasonings and the directions are on there. One oh, jar. It's a starter kit. Okay. And, yeah. And all you have to do is put your Trinity in there. And uh, you have to put your protein, whether it be shrimp and crab meat or chicken and sausage or whatever you want to do. And it takes really 30 minutes to make a gumbo that tastes as good as standing over that stove for three or four hours. Right. You know? Okay. I never I heard mean, of that, Larry. Larry, yeah, he's down. Keith told me where he's from. He's, he's as Cajun as they could come. And Keith talks kind of with an accent. And Keith said, yeah, we can't hardly understand him. He's so Cajun. <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. he, he's way down there in, in the heartland. But, yeah, it's called it's called Uncle Larry's Ready, Set, Gumbo. But he's also got a uh, a stew 
in a jar and he's got some seasonings. But uh, that guy, man, I think I'm killing him because that video, I didn't think it would do that good. And that thing's, it's done pretty good for no longer it's been up. And he's getting sales out of the yin yang. Mm. And, and he even sent this little video to me on Messenger on Facebook. And uh, it was for me and Keith to look at. It was just, we're the only ones that seen it. But he's got all these boxes packed up, ready to ship. He goes, you mothers are killing me. <laughs> <laughs> Keeping him busy. And that was just after like two, two or three days. I'm like, good God. I said, he's going to hate me. I'm supposed to meet him next month. He's coming to Biloxi to the MGM baseball field over here. And I don't know what they do every year, but he's there every year. And I'm supposed to meet him on the second floor. And he's going to have me uh, like a package of care guess, package. Yeah, yeah, all his goodies and stuff. I'm looking forward to it. I got to think. I told my wife, I said, you could take that Uncle Larry's. It's already got the seasoning and the roux. I said, you could just put that in a pan and just thin it out with a little bit of water and just make a gravy for mashed potatoes and, and gravy. You could put it over stuff. And it ain't got to be just gumbo, you know. Right, and, uh, right. Just save time. You know, everybody's in a hurry these days. It's, it's perfect. But yeah, and the, the Rue, the George Rue is cheap enough. It's like two fifty a mm -hmm. jar. But you see, they put that Rue in there hot, and I mean that's very hot. Okay, oh, yeah. so those jars have some kind of temper to them. Yeah, like a know? mason jar, like a mason jar. Would. Yeah, yeah, but not quite. You know, because I, I don't want nobody to go out there and try to can stuff. You know, in no. a pressure cooker, because I don't know if a pressure cooker, I never tried a pressure cooker, but a water bath, yes, it will hold up to a water bath. I yeah. mean, plus and a little more. But I've I've put up a lot of stuff in those roux jars, because me and Missy used to put a, a lot of stuff in there. And uh, I mean, like cha cha, mm. uh, you know, the sweet cha cha, not the pepper cha cha. Yeah. You know, uh, the old country style yellow cha cha. Uh, let me see. Uh, tomatoes. Uh, 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 different hot sauces that we made, you know, uh, and uh, strawberry preserves, uh, mulberry jam, mulberry jam, plenty of mulberry jam. I've, I've got a bunch really of good. mulberry trees around yeah. my house. Yeah. And some smaller trees, you know, not these big old with a two foot trunk, you know, or three foot mm -hmm. across the trunk. These are small because uh, they're young. And, and I, you know, I'll get like a, a damn crawfish boiling pot out of them, you know, oh, yeah. them, just off them couple trees. Yeah, I've done that before years ago. We lived at a place that had a mulberry tree already there. And man, that thing would low down every year. These long mulberries. It looks like a blackberry, but it, they're long. Yeah, yeah they like that. Uh, but like your thumb. And every year I would take and I would do mulberry jelly. And then I'd bob two or three flats of strawberries and make strawberry jam. I'd do it all like in a day's time and just give away jars, put jars up, just whatever. I right. used to enjoy that. That was way before YouTube. I'm, I'm, I don't have the time to get into that no more. I wish I did, you know. But. I got two of them mulberry trees here, and uh, both of them might be disappearing sometime soon. Yeah. Well, are you gonna cut them down? What are you doing? Just trim them back. Trim well, them back real things, good. The only thing is, one of them has got about a four and a half to almost five foot diameter base and everything on Ooh. it. And it's Man. right at the corner of my other garage. Mm. So it's got that, that concrete slab about four and a half inches higher. Yeah. yeah that's what I was doing like that. Yeah. Okay. And then the other one is going to have to get trimmed back or whatever when someone moves down here in a couple of years. Do they still produce when they get real big like that? Oh, yeah. Do they? Okay. Yep. Oh, yeah. Uh, uh, Aunt, Aunt Lady, that Grand Chenier. Uh, over there, she had a, a huge one that was about three foot across, you know, from left to right, the trunk. And uh, it grew them ones that, you know, big as your thumb. And it was, it, it was huge, huge. 
And I, I'm, I've got my pick my share of mulberries off of that one. You know, I mean, off the ground because, I mean, the, the limbs are so high in the ground, you got to throw some sticks up there, you know, yeah. in the branches and stuff to uh, to knock the ripe ones down. And what we do, we we put a sheet, like a queen size bed sheet, on the ground or king size, and we'll shake them branches. We'll get a like a twenty foot duck pole. You know, for a uh, for a boat, you know, going through the swamp, pulling through a swamp or shallow water, duck bill pole, and we'll shake them branches like that, and all of them ripe mulberries will fall on that bed sheet. We just fold them up like that, pour them in a five gallon bucket. Heck yeah! For me, I just go out there and I pick them up off the ground when they're nice and black. Yeah, that too. Uh, Anthony, GM85, he does his own peppers, George's own peppers. He grows a lot of his own peppers. He gets the seeds from Italy or what have you, or like a reputable company like Pepper Joe Seed Company. Yep. And, uh, and Pepper Joe's is the most expensive seed company out there, but you get the true true blue deal. When you order uh, uh, Carolina Reaper peppers, you get Carolina Reapers. You're not going to get a variant of it. Because I used to grow seeds for Pepper Joe Seed Company. I'd grow the peppers and I'd process the pepper pods and get the seeds out, dry them, process them, ship them to him, and he'd cut me a check. Yeah. Well, Anthony so, also peppers uh, on the well, oh, he, he's always eating on the live stream. Yeah, he'll, he'll, you'll be seeing, and he'll just pop them, Marty. Yeah, Hot Some, peppers. Something else we used to have at this same place. We had a big fig tree, and every year I'd make fig preserves also. But I had to oh, hang yeah. those pie plates in it just to try to keep the birds from eating them all. They were yeah, and OCDs too will work. Yeah, yeah. But uh, love me some fig preserves. I buy them now. Like I said, I don't have the time to do all that. But that was back in the early 90s and all through the 90s before YouTube and everything. Uh, when I was when I had my radio shop in uh, Grosset off I, at Tiger Truck Stop off I-10. Uh, and I was making money hand over fist with that radio shop. Uh, I'd have mama do. Uh, I supply everything. And she would do the work, and I'd take half the stuff. Like uh, figs, fig preserves, pears. I had a pear tree. Not the Bartlett pears. I had the little round canning pears, you know, that we have down here a lot in the south. And uh, and you, you, you can those. You know, you cook them down, can them. And uh, that's the only way to get them soft, really. And, they almost have to be just about rotten for them to be soft. And then you'll have so many, you can't keep up with them, you know. I mean, I love pears. I eat, I eat a pear every day, you know, and an avocado about four or five times, three or four times a week. Those are good for you. I yeah, oh, avocados are the best, the healthiest thing you can eat is an avocado. They're really good for your skin, too. If you got any kind of skin conditions or anything like that. It, it, it'll help to clear that up, you know. Salt water does that, too. Yeah, uh, yeah. So I work shrimping, and I had a guy, he used to deckhand for me. He said, man, I love deckhanding for you. I said, why? He said, because I've got this skin disorder and stuff, bad blood, you know, not yeah. bad, but the blood would come up to the skin and all that. And he says, after two days, my arms look beautiful, you know. Well, my son, Derek, that's in some of my videos, he's got a dry skin condition, had it ever since his kid in the mm -hmm. winter months, it gets real flaky. You know, I mean, just flake all over his chest and stomach. Yeah. And, but when he was living on that sailboat, man, he would go off a lot, you know, and he'd dive in that salt water. And I, I think a lot of times he'd bathe in it. And he said that just, he had no issues when he was doing that, you know. It's good for your skin. It's good for your sinuses. Uh, oh, yeah. Once you once you close to the coast, like Holly Beach, when we go to Holly Beach down there, when you live down there, uh, your sinuses, you're going to be blowing your nose a lot, a lot. And 
it's just getting a lot of that old stuff out of you. Just like washing your nostrils out with this saline water. Same thing. And you live on the coast. Uh, you, you, your head will get cleared up in about a week and a half. Yeah. Hey, hey, hey Boo. Sp yes. Speak, speaking of Holly Beach, when I went over there and went fishing with Blues, I, before I met him, I had to wait on him and like took a ride down whatever that road was from Hackberry. It's like a little skinny ass two lane road that goes down to Holly Beach. Right, and right. I'll tell you what, that's before the hurricane. Oh, and yeah. I thought, man, if I ever won the lottery, I'm going to move down here because there's nothing there but a few houses. And it just, I thought it was the coolest place in the world. But you did see a few oil rigs out there in the Gulf. But oh, yeah. I man, I'll tell you what, I thought that was the coolest place. Now, that, that was what I liked before, about it was like there was nobody there. I mean, yeah, there was a Rita, houses, but nothing like before, this around here. That was before Hurricane Rita. Well, yeah, whichever one destroyed Hackberry and Holly Beach. I don't remember which that one. That was Rita, right yeah. after Katrina. A month after Katrina, Rita hit. Katrina took out No, 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 wasn't it wasn't that. It was later. It had to be later than that because it was oh out. laura yeah probably laura. laura or or that other one that passed a year after rita yeah because uh yeah the, the fish camp was still there in hackberry and it got tore all to hell during that hurricane that i'm talking about but it, it, i was just i liked it man i thought um uh, i just thought it was awesome down there it you have to have now see my dad and my uncle had a camp at holly beach and my uncle had two lots. He had a lot on the blacktop road on the back, and he had a lot on the sand beach road. But that's so all there was, away. really, right? Uh -huh. I mean, th there really wasn't much air, but just like two or three roads. I mean, there were, I mean, actually at the beaches area, there wasn't a right. whole lot there. Once you went past Hackberry and the fish camp and the school, there was a school there to serve food. And then you went down that road through the swamp. Yeah, yeah. You went all the way. You went all the way through the marsh to yeah, the, the dead end of that road the, to the T. You turn yeah. right, you go to Port Arthur, Texas. You turn left, you go to Cameron. Yeah. But there's Holly Beach. You're staring it in the face. Right, right, right there. But there was a lot <laughs> of camps, man. All them roads were full of camps and houses, full. Yeah. Before Rita hit, and. When it Rita hit, I mean, it just wiped everything. It was a clean slate, clean, nothing, it. nothing, not even a pylon was sticking out the ground hardly. I but my it. uncle, he had two lots. I guess he sold the lots uh, because now code is you have to uh, have two lots because of the sewage system. You have to really? have two lots nowadays. And you have to be off the ground certain yeah. amount of feet now sure. uh that's because of insurance and all that i'm right. pretty sure if you're a multi-millionaire you want to build a house on the ground and supply your own insurance they wouldn't have a problem with it you know if you bribe the electric company to turn your electricity on because you don't need insurance you're rich enough you know so yeah. and you don't have to spend all that extra money to be up in the air and then when you're that high in the air Hauling groceries and clothes and stuff when you're there for the weekend, haul, hauling up the stairs. If you got a bunch of kids and people with you, that's fine. But if it's just you and the wife, you know, go grocery shopping and have to bring up a ton of groceries, you know, you need an elevator, you know, just a small elevator. My buddy down in Chauvin, uh, he's got an elevator at his house down there because they live down there. He's got a house in Baton Rouge. Not far from JB's, <laughs> and okay. uh, he's got a house in Chauvin. Oh, JB! I, I don't know. I just, I just liked it there. I thought, I don't know. Oh, it's it's awesome down there. Yeah, it's quiet. That's what it oh, is. Oh yeah, quiet. it's it's not any beach community I've ever seen. I mean, it's <laughs> like there's like nobody there. There is, but there's nobody there. You know what I mean? You, mm -hmm. you got to drive what 15, 20 minutes back to Hackberry to hit that grocery store right there on the left. Right past yeah. the right past about, the school. About 20 minutes, something like that. Yeah. It was a grocery store and a gas station right there at Hackberry. I forget what it was called. But. Hackberry was a good sized little town now yeah. at one time. Uh it was a you know a, a docking place where you know shrimp boats would dock 
and you, you and you just walk to your house from the shrimp boat. You just walk to your house down the road, you know. Yeah. When you came in or jumped in your vehicle, or whatever. Uh, crab, crab house, shrimp houses over there, but a lot of that's changed now. I'm sure. I'm sure. Yeah. Uh, my mom new codes changed that. My mama always said time changes everything, you know, and it does. There used to be some docks here in Pascoe called Rayleigh Rayleigh Seafood. Rayleigh's, that, yeah. Yeah, uh-huh. that, that's where all the boats would conjure up and dock, and they would unload their shrimp there. But that place closed down years ago. You know, now I don't know what they do around Pascagoula, but there's some buddies of mine that still dock there, but they normally unload in uh, uh, Bayou La Battery, Alabama, you know. Yeah, down at Rodney's, Rodney Lyons' place. Yeah. Yeah, Rodney Lyon owns that shrimp house. I used to have 25% of that bar that's on top of the seafood house, shrimp house. Okay. Ride knockers. Yeah, anyway, hurricane, uh, hurricane change thing too. <laughs> oh, we all I knew forget, that. Yeah. I forget you know, the thing. name of the uh, the shrimp dock. But when you're going up the uh, Pascagoula River, and you go under the bridge, the new bridge, uh, right there to the right, there was Clark. a shrimp dock right there. Clark's. No, that's on the left. That's a fish house. Oh, you're talking about that. Uh, that's where they process and box everything for like frozen shrimp, where you're talking about. And I can't think of the name of it. No, it wasn't that big. No, it was just a little hole in the wall. Oh, uh, well, I don't know. But yeah, you're right. I, I've seen boats there all my life. And then even on... On the south side of the bridge, that's where my buddy Ricky Brown docks his boats at, right off the side. And you, when you go over that over that high rise now, you look down there to your right. If the boats are in, you'll see mm-hmm. both of his still hulls. He's got like two 90 foot still hulls. You right. Know? 98 footers. Yeah. And yeah. Big slabs. Hey, Chris yeah. Miller, how you doing? Yeah. But right when you get under the bridge, uh, you go just a little ways. Instead of turning left in, in Clark's Bayou, you know, to go to yeah. Clark Seafood, because I used to run a snapper boat for Clark Seafood. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's on the you left. Know, that's right. Yeah, that's on the left. And then this one, is, instead of taking that left in Clark's Bayou, it was to the right. They had a set of yeah, docks there. I, I know what you're talking about, but still, that's a little process in place, because I know people that work there, and their well, job it, was to pedal. It probably is now, because it's been 15 years since I've been there. Yeah, they uh they they pick or they peel shrimp and everything, and they they put them in boxes, freeze them, batter them. You know how you buy these shrimp already battered, it's frozen. Yeah. That's what they did there. And I cannot remember the name of that place. I was born and raised okay. there. I, I just can't think of it. We lost Rob. No, he's back there. Oh, okay. I'm experimenting. <laughs> okay. Mm. Did you uh, put me back, Boo? I'm just playing yeah. around this thing. Yeah, I did. All right, thanks. I I don't know what I'm doing. I'm just goofing off here. I was, on a, I was on a different platform last night. It wasn't StreamYard. It was uh, what was the name of that? It was with that Dead Broke Nation live they did last night. It's similar to StreamYard, but uh, uh I've never heard. Restream? No, it wasn't Zoom? Restream. It was a different Z- one. Zoom? Wasn't Zoom? There's probably Rumble. a bunch of. Wasn't Rumble? Rumble. Wasn't no. Rumble? It was done through YouTube, but I mean, it was, you know how StreamYard hooks to YouTube? Yeah. It was, it was a different platform, a lot like StreamYard. I can't yeah. think of the well, name of it. There's Restream, there's a Zoom, Rumble, and I forget the other one. How, yeah. how, do you make, how do you make yourself go blank but stay in the, uh, stay up here on the page? Okay. You, you, you stop cam? Yeah, at the bottom of your... To, bottom left, you see mute, oh. stop cam. There, there you go. go. There you go. Yeah. You can okay. also mute yourself. Yeah. Okay. You so can, when I make a beer can. run, I can hit stop cam. Right, right. right. That's what I did. <laughs> or you, don't have to. you don't have to if you don't want, but. No, I know. know. Or go check the score on a football game or something. Okay, I got you. Oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, now, there's there was another shrimp house, a couple of them. On, on the back bay in uh, uh, Biloxi Bay. Oh, there still is. They're still over here. Okay. Yeah, there was a couple of them there. I sold, 
when I was running that shrimp, that one double rigger, uh, we sold uh, in Pascagoula because that's where we keep the boat at. Or we just pay them so much a pound for how many pounds that we got off the boat and put in our pickup trucks to go sell up in Loosedale or, uh, or wherever because the shrimp houses, and they understood that we were selling our shrimp to the public because they wasn't giving no, there was no price on shrimp. I mean, if you wanted 75 cents a pound yeah. for $3 shrimp, you know, hey, yeah. you could, you know, do that. That's, you That's, know, behind behind the Hard Rock Casino, they got docks too. And most of that is Vietnamese in there. And what they'll do is they'll go, I guess they pay for that slip or whatever, but they go out and come back in the next day and they they sell them fresh right yeah. off the boats. And mm -hmm. everybody knows to go down there with an ice chest and you can buy whatever you want. And mm -hmm. that's some of the nicest shrimp, man. And you're going to pay mm -hmm. half. You're going to pay half there instead of going to like Galat's or. Uh, yeah, Galat's. One. That's the one that's in Back Bay. Yeah. You're yeah. going to pay half, but they got a fish uh, uh, a fish market. Then they got Des Ports. But if you buy right off the boat, that's just common sense. You you cut out that middle, man, and you, you're saving a bunch of money, you know. All right. If you're just going to buy them. That's the way I buy them. I buy them right off the boat when I can. There was a place here in Ocean Springs right next door called Ben's Seafood. And they were Vietnamese, and I used to buy right from him, but he died, man. He was kind of young, and he died of a massive heart attack a few years ago, and they shut that whole operation down. But Wow. Yeah, he had some really good prices on that stuff. He, he's actually mentioning, I know, at least one of my videos, and uh, a lot of people... I knew people that come from up north down here to buy this fresh seafood, go back up there and sell it, you know? Yeah, yeah. Yep, seven, 710 all. You said, buy the battery. Yep, sound like Shrimp City. Yep, it is. Yeah, that's uh, like, uh, that's probably the biggest seafood or, or shrimping thing around nowadays. Biloxi used to be the seafood capital of the world back in the 40s, but. We still do a lot of it, but they lost that title years ago. They're not yeah. as much into it now as they used to be, you know. Del 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 of, uh, deep uh, Water Horizon? No. Because uh -uh. okay. I know that impacted the uh, Gulf Coast as far as a bunch of the seafood and stuff. A lot, a lot, of, import, yeah. a lot of import stuff had something to do with it. Now, uh, hey, Kane Sample. No, uh, they they put that dispersant in the water, and I don't know if there's any long lasting effects of that. But we never seen any real effect with the quality of our seafood or anything after that. We we just, didn't either, and, and and especially in southeast Louisiana, where everything was supposed to be the hot hot zone, you know, yeah. hot area. Uh, that it was just a big hype on the news that it was that bad because yeah. we never saw uh, anything that bad. Well, you know how the media is. They're, they're going to yeah. exaggerate 10 times what it yeah. really is. Oh, yeah. you know? Just like Katrina with New Orleans, and they didn't show nothing on Mississippi coast. Yeah, I know. And we're the ones that really got the brunt of it. The eye went in in the Mississippi. And, and we're the the, And we're on the dirty side of it. You know? They yeah. Are, I was there, man. <laughs> look, I mean, yeah. it was, it was, <laughs> it was something else. Hey, look, I've, I've been through a lot of hurricanes in my life down in Louisiana here on the coast but i tell you what that one there kind of had me a little scared you yeah know? me too i mean i didn't think that was possible for the entire city of pascagoula to go completely underwater and it did every yeah. every square inch of that city was underwater well i, I uh, didn't think it was possible you know over where sunny sunny not can't live he lived off of the uh pascagoula river that little river come off of it, and then you could get to his house from that that little offshoot of the Pascagoula River. Yeah. Uh, he uh, his house, his property is very high off the ground. His property did not flood. Really? Okay. And Sonny Knockans. Yeah, he's got a little mobile home park back there. And then he's got okay. his brick house and all he that. 
like a little knoll by itself because everything else went yeah, under. Yeah, like on an island right yeah. there, you know, and, and yeah, because I had some friends of mine that lived, that owned, his place was you owned your own trailer, you know, and you just paid a lot fee. Yeah. But he did have a couple of small trailers, smaller trailers, like one bedroom or something, or you no know, two small rooms or what have you. He yeah. ran out uh, to fishermen, you know, snapper fishermen and stuff. And uh, everybody was good friends. Everybody got along. There was never no trouble. Hey, Rose Blue, how you doing, Miss Maria? Yeah. Delcom, Delcom, Louisiana was uh, shrimp capital of Louisiana at one time. That in Morgan City. That, that, oh, yeah. Delcom, they had uh, processing blue, plants, like you were saying. Rough. Peelers. No. Can you hear you? Yep. Uh, peeling plants, uh, they had a uh, you know, live boat, uh, which back then they didn't have IQF boats, and they had a uh, uh, shrimp that were being headed on the boats. And that place had a, a, a vac system and a sort of grading system that would grade the shrimp on these rollers, and it was throwing the shrimp, it was uh, this. Small shrimp would come out first, and at the end, just a big shrimp would come out. And you'd have like eight different grades of shrimp like that going into them boxes. Yeah. I was I was looking to see. No, I don't see it. Anywhere there's a lot of public docks that the boats don't have to pay. To dock their boats while they in, that's where you're gonna have a lot of uh, Gulf City Seafood. That's one I was thinking of on the right hand side of there in Pascula. Gulf oh, City. Oh yeah, that, that was that processor. That, okay. Yeah, Gulf City, right there on the right. So you go. Oh under, yeah, that place was over there when that other little bitty place was there. It was yeah, right yeah. past it. It was right, right. past it. That's what I was thinking of, Gulf City. Yeah, them big boats, them big slabs go in there because that was all IQF shrimp headed right. and all that. And they yeah. did another place right to the right of it or the south of it. They had the little smaller boats that kind of docked in there. Yeah, right. That's the one yeah. I was talking about. We 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 used to tie up there also at that little smaller place, and we paid them like uh, twenty cents a pound to cross our shrimp over their dock to put in our trucks. But we used to sell to them too, though. You know, we yeah. was, you know, we would. That was the only place we'd sell to. Now we keep a few ice chests for ourselves. You know, which that's understandable. You know, for our freezers, ought to sell a few pounds. Sure. Hey, Rocky, how you doing, bud? Hey, Rob, right. that was a, that was a pretty cool uh, cast iron stove you were showing on your video yesterday. I don't think he heard me. He must be muted. He's or muted. Must... Well, no, he, he's muted, uh, but his voice is muted. He probably yeah, heard yeah, he, you, but he was he, getting up. Yeah, somebody was talking to him, I think. Yeah, if I've got I need in person. I can still hear y'all. Yeah, he, he did a little video yesterday, and it's a 1930-something cast iron, like a little pot belly stove. That he was showing, that was pretty cool. Oh, pot belly, yeah. And they had a little uh, on the about where the flu comes out, it had a little yeah. plate area where yeah, you could yeah. put a coffee pot, yeah, right, right, yeah. That's yeah. pretty cool. I like to have something like that where we shoot videos just for that rustic look, you know. Mm -hmm. My buddy Johnny Best, he's got one of those in his house. That's how he heats his house, wood. Oh, yeah, yeah. That, I told pot him belly. that. I said, Boy, that make a good heater, you know. Hey, Cornosaurus Rex, how you doing, one of me? You snuck up on me. No, not a Franklin stove. I used to have one of those old Franklin stoves. This one, that he, huge. this one he showed, I think it came out of the 1800s, but it was made by uh, Montgomery Ward. It still uh -huh. had all the lettering on the back of it. Wow. Or no, I'm sorry, 1930-something, not 1800s. I remember the uh, King's. Uh, wood heater uh, it had four feet on it. It was long. It was about uh, oh, right at about two foot tall all together. Had a front door you'd open, 
then they had a little draft drawer you could open that more air would get in yeah and you had your flu on the back stovepipe coming out the back and you had two eyes two iron circles we call yeah. them eyes and you can take them off or you could put them on either way and uh and you could cook on that one right there because it had a flat top to it you know it's sure. about two 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 and a half two foot long two and a half foot long from the front to the back yeah I, that's why i told him rob's what i commented on the video and i said my mom and my dad they grew up as kids and that's what they had to cook on was these these yeah uh -huh. these wood burning ovens you know yeah well, wood burning stoves or gas. Yeah, stoves. They had gas yeah. way back then. No, but they had the old stove. They were sharecroppers, man, poor as dirt. Mm. But uh, that's that's how they grew up, you know, barefooted, yeah. didn't own shoes, had to walk to school. And, and you so know, my dad was raised. My dad was born in 1918. Yeah. So he went through the depression and all that stuff. Yeah, and my, I'm pretty sure they didn't have propane. I'm pretty sure everything was a wood stove. For my them dad, back then. My dad was born in 1919 and my mom was born in 1921. And uh they didn't own vehicles. They had they were lucky if they had a horse and buggy, but I'm not even sure if they did, you know. But yep, times have changed. We were spoiled when we were kids compared to what they went through a generation before us, you know. We had right. we had a home with central air and TV and it's amazing how quick things can change, you know? Right. So I often wished I kind of was raised in days like that, though, you know, it's, I don't know, it's something really, I don't know. You know what I'm saying? It's just like I, I would have fit right in, I reckon is what I'm trying to say. I wouldn't have had no problem with it. I'll tell you what, if you ever get a chance, you go on Mater's Workshop channel if you want a little giggle. You know, anybody, if y'all want a little giggle, y'all go to Mater's channel and scan, breeze through there and uh, look up his uh, hot dog cooking videos, his spaghetti cooking video. Hot dogs. <laughs> hot, yeah, hot dog. You know, weenies. Yeah. Uh, he's, uh, it, it's unique, put it that way. Okay. But this is for shits and giggles only, though. You know, yeah. that's all that's for. Yeah. Yeah, Rob, I was telling you. Can you hear me, Rob? Yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, I was talking about that stove you were showing yesterday on that video you did. Man, I'd love to be able to find one of them somewhere one of these days <laughs> where we shoot video just to give it that old rustic look, you know? Yeah. That, that, that would fit right in. But uh, that's pretty cool. That's a nice piece. Montgom Montgomery Ward, wasn't it? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Yeah. I I didn't even know that that, that it was Montgomery Ward. My dad's had that thing for mom and dad's had that thing for as long as I remember. Yeah. So I never looked at the uh you know that plate on the back of it. And then yeah. when I, I thought, well, I'll do a video on this. I thought, well, people are gonna ask about it. So I thought I would look for some markings or something. But uh, you know, my dad had told me about it, my aunt, but I just didn't know anything about it. But yeah, you know, I've, I've had some comments that people, uh, people got those similar to that, things like that. But I guess you could find one, you know, like at yard sales or antique sales or things like that. Oh yeah, mm -hmm. I'm sure I could find one, probably on eBay if I look. You know, yeah, and it'll yeah. tell like cost to ship it being that heavy, but it it would still be cool to have. Yeah, it's pretty right. heavy. I don't even know how heavy it is. I mean, it's. It, it's heavy for me to pick it up and carry it out in the driveway and make a video with it. Oh, but I bet. That's about 80 pounds, huh? Probably. At, at know, least. I don't know. I'm old. I can't pick nothing up anymore. No. So. Well, it, it is awkward, too, though, the way it it's is. made. And it's oh, kind of yeah. held together with, like, uh, it's got pins and some, you know, like old brass bolts my dad got. You know, my dad, uh -huh. uh, he worked at a power plant for 50 years back in the day, so kind of had the five finger discount on parts here and right. there so he had a garage full of stuff that he put it together with yeah you know and uh, it's not bail, bailing a wire too probably <laughs> yeah and, it, and like it's not original and i you know i'm not trying to sell it to make money or 
All right. Or brag about. I'm just trying to find out. I'd like to know exactly, kind of find out how old it is. Yeah. You know, because uh, thank okay, God for my idea. grandfather. I'm not a, a freaking coal miner. You know, ended up growing up where I grew up and then joined the military. But you know that I guess that was the thing back in the day, which is cool. I I appreciate that very much. I like. I wish things were more simple like that. Me too. That's what I was just saying. I would really fit in to those times, man. Yeah. You know, they didn't have nothing, but they had each other and they grew a lot of their own food, if not all of it. And yeah, yeah they you raised to, it and grew it. They knew yeah. how to survive, you know. You meet you meet and you people your are people are spoiled rotten nowadays with all this technology and stuff like that and i mean i'm one to talk i'm making my living through technology you know <laughs> what i'm saying but i would have fit into that because when i was coming up it was all about hunting and fishing and you know yeah. my parents raised me up and they experienced all that you know yeah. so. well if you you that age you were born in the 50s late 50s i was born in 58 okay johnny was born in 57 and you know that was, it was all country out here you know where i'm at right now this was country and uh uh so they 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 grew gardens and and raised you know uh a few pigs and a few calves you know yeah i'm so old that when my mom would take me to go buy a new school clothes <laughs> we didn't go to sears we went to sears and roebuck you know yeah <laughs> right yeah that's a true story. And, and y'all went to the catalog store. Y'all didn't go to the big store. Y'all went to the little catalog store in town, more than likely. Dad and my mom would actually order from the catalog a lot of times. Yeah. Yeah. Well, my you, mom, yeah, yeah. My mom did too. Yeah. You yeah. went through the catalog. You marked off what you want. You went to the little catalog store mm -hmm. and they ordered it. And you picked it up there. Big you know? old box full of clothes. Yep. Yeah. I remember. That's all how it was. Because uh, I wasn't, I was raised south of Lafayette uh way south of lafayette and sears was in lafayette and the big store and uh and on the south side of abbeville they had the catalog store and that's where you went they had a few things in the store you know but they didn't have everything and that's when you ordered the clothes school clothes that's where mama used to go to and order my school clothes yeah 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 they didn't have ups or none of that no more i mean they'd have to <laughs> truck it in and stuff like that. it wasn't no amazon.com or any of that you know we've right. seen a lot of things seen a lot of things in our lifetimes but they really did you know they've seen a lot of change but uh we have to you know even my son oh. he he's 41 years old and he sees such a huge difference just in his lifetime you know yeah, yeah. hey this is guys and gals in the comments this link that's showing up Y'all look for it in the chat. That is Barbecue Pit Dog's link. The fella That's right cool. below me right there. That's his link for his channel. Y'all go check him out. He's got some good good cooking, smoking, and barbecuing videos. Just like Russ. Thank, thank you, boo. Oh, thank not you. a problem. Not oh, a problem. Well, well, everybody's welcome. <laughs> I'll be thank back you. in a minute. I got to go. I got to go lean off the dock for a sec. All right. <laughs> Yeah, the one yep. thing that Cajun didn't talk about, me cooking my hot dogs, I use well-seasoned hot dog tongs. Hot dog sauce? Tongs. Oh, tongs. tongs. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> now, it, it, somebody made a comment a while back and everything, um, and this guy said that the only thing that uh, gringos know how to cook is spaghetti. I was like okay, so I made a spaghetti video. Yeah. And then it's like okay, fine. I'm gonna cook some hot dogs. <laughs> the country way of cooking them. That's probably, right. How was that in the skillet? You'd have to watch the video. Oh, okay. I gotta subscribe to your channel. Yeah, I like I said, it, it was. Um, it believe me, this is definitely not the way I would. You know, normally do it, but like I said, oh. it was done just for kicks and fun. giggles. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, I, I was doing it for the halibut, just for the fish. I, 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 I like. Fish, just for halibut. 
I, I like uh, I like the big channels that you know, big fancy ass channels that show you how to make something you know really quick if you need it. But I like the down home channels like we are. You know, yeah. R- Russell's channel is big, but he is just down home regular people like we are, and he, you know, we just kind of show it just the way it is if you want to show it. Or, yeah. or talk about whatever you want to talk about, you know. So I've got a uh, now my girlfriend, she's got her own channel dealing with crochet and everything, but we also have one that's dealing with cooking. And I did what was it about two weeks ago? It was like talking about how to make the uh, homemade cranberry relish yeah. and how to make a no bake uh, blueberry cheesecake. Oh man, that sounds good. <laughs> yeah, it does. Yeah, it, unfortunately, there's not much of it left. <laughs> yeah. That's, I love uh, that sounds really cake. good. I love yeah. cheesecake. And then, I mean, we wound up doing you know like a uh, uh, video on uh, like a Western style omelet. So I mean, just doing a little cooking stuff here and there. Yeah, yeah. brand brand new channel. Uh, you know, so. Uh, what you got? Four videos on it? Something like that. I, you know, last night I, I made, uh, well, night before last, I bought uh, chuck steaks and I, I grilled them. And the first spot I took was kind of tough and I got pissed off. And I, I was just like, I'm not buying any more cheap meat like this again. You know, to make a steak with. And then right. last night, I took the leftover steak and I cut some of it up into chunks. And I still have peppers growing out here. So I, I picked a green bell pepper and I had leftover baked potato and I chopped up and threw it in a skillet and made like a hash out of it. Mm-hmm. And and the steak was put, it was cooked perfectly. Um, but that first night I made it, it just, I don't know, just didn't, it just didn't, cut it well a chuck steak is one it that comes from the front part of the the animal the cow yeah. well, i thought it, i thought it was the damn shoe of the of the animal the first night i, I bit it the chuck uh, is kind of like uh now yeah. chuck eye is very tender and good a chuck eye but the yeah. chuck is like the last or the front th- three ribs all the way into the shoulder of a cow that's your chuck area and I, i've made it before and it was good and and the the end of the story is it ended up being really good i cut it up i, I cut some of it last night threw it in a skillet and made like you would call a hash but it was like a big chunky hash i love a and, hash man like and that, it, it was one. so good that i thought after i ate it i was like i'm gonna make a video on this i'm gonna make some more because i got more potatoes and and more of that steak left over but I was so damn full. I was like, oh, I can't do it. <laughs> I got to be hungry. Next, to make a video. Ne- next do it time we, cool. next time we do a chuck roast, because we we do a lot of chuck steaks, chuck roasts. I'd rather do a chuck roast. That's what I did cheaper. today, Boo. I, I I grilled one. Well, I smoked one today, and it's over there on the stove right now. Well, we'll make well, tacos. We do. Food. What we do is uh, we cook it down in a in a gravy, Cajun gravy. You know, no yeah. kitchen bouquet, nothing like that. If you see any of my videos, cooking videos on this channel or my Boo channel, Boo Luke channel, uh, every, uh, there's no kitchen bouquet in my house. You know, the, the only thing that's considered a fake gravy or whatever, which is not, it's the roux. You know, and the roux is a base for your gumbo and stews. Yeah. You know, Cajun, Cajun style. But uh, Missy cooked a chuck roast. Uh, <laughs> About three nights ago, I want to say, three days ago, and it is fork tender, fork tender, yeah. big time. No knife needed. I mean, no knife at all needed. And I make sandwiches with it. I leave it rice and gravy the first night. After that, I make sandwiches with it. Yeah, oh. that's the way this one is on my stove right now. Just shred it and, you know, you take a fork, pull it apart, mm-hmm. put it on a, I, I like, I just eat everything on a tortilla, throw it on there and put some Yeah, I make a lot of, I get some soft tortillas and make a burrito, a wrap, 
you know, right. whatever. Oh, you I, call I, what I love you want. that. It's, it's good. <laughs> oh yeah, uh, sour cream, sour cream. Oh yeah, I gotta have yeah. that sour cream. What I do yeah. before I put anything on my tortilla shell, my taco shell, I heat it up in a black iron skillet or skillet, yeah. whatever. Heat yeah. it up like you, you know, like you do just for a little while, and then I, I slather that sour cream all over that. That you know, about that far from the edges on the big. 12 inch tortilla shell <laughs> and uh about that far from the edges and then i add everything on it and instead of trying to get every the sour cream on top and dollops now if i had one of those uh i'm gonna ask my store manager the produce manager if he can get the daisy sour cream i buy mine in the big uh, tubs you know the yeah. container plastic yeah. containers I'm going to ask him if he can get the one in the bags because Daisy actually makes the ones in the squeeze bag. I've seen it. It looks seen like it. a little, uh, like, a like a like a caulking tube, you know, yeah. when you, uh, the end of a caulking tube with the little cap over it. No, you got to buy, you yeah, got to buy just, those at Lowe's. And you just squeeze, squeeze it out <laughs> of that uh, container that it's almost like an icing uh, bag. Yeah. That's, we, what, that's what we buy is that squeeze bottle. But you sitting there talking about that, that reminds me of the way I make a Philly cheesesteak pizza. I'll take my pizza dough and I'll buy that Mexican crema, which is kind of like a creme fraiche or a thinned out sour cream is all it is. And I use that as my base. I go on with those sauteed peppers, onions, and ribeye steak. And then put slap that sucker in the uh, pizza oven or oven or whatever you're going to cook it in. And man, it gives it such a good flavor. You know, it, what it reminds me of, I don't know if you ever had Domino's Philly cheesesteak pizza, that certain something yeah. you couldn't tell what yeah. it was. That's uh -huh. what it gives it, man. It's, it's really good, you know. And it's that, uh, what'd you call it? Man, these people drive me nuts with all these. Uh, it's, you buy it in the ethnic section of your grocery store. It's called Mexicana Crema, a certain Crema. brand that they sell, like at Walmart's got it. And it's a type of sour cream, but it's thinned out. You can take oh, regular okay. sour cream. You can take regular sour cream and take a little bit of milk, just a little, mix it up real good until you get it kind of more pourable, but not too thin. And then you can take and spread that all over your, uh, oh, okay. your pizza crust. Saute you. peppers, onions with salt and pepper, season them as you're doing it, and some mushrooms. Do mushrooms in there, put all that on there, and chunks of uh, <clears throat> of ribeye steak that you sauteed in mm -hmm. with your, all your vegetables and put that on your pizza and bake that off man you talk about good oh, look at here boom 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 pirate stroke jude with a little two dollar super chat thank you sir <laughs> great stream boo good night my dude appreciate it dude he's over there in uh shake and bake steak california him and anthony is over there he's a diesel mechanic it's oh, okay. the name Power Stroke Jew. Anything you want to know about him, Power Strokes, he's got, you got a question, he's got an answer. You got a good channel, too. But, yeah, oh, Philly Cheesesteaks, they had one in Mississippi. What was it at in, uh, was it in Biloxi or, there's a little mom and pop place. It wasn't a chain. Uh, uh, sub place, you know, uh, and they had the press that that sandwich press. Yeah, I got one of them. Yeah, and uh, it wasn't the busiest place in the world, but I tell you what, I got one of their Philly steak and cheese subs, and man, it was knock down, drag out. It was awesome. I mean, there, I inhaled that thing, and I oh, I remember that place where it was, and I said, I'm coming back yeah. here, and I did. In Pascagoula, or? Uh, no, it was, uh, I want to say Ocean Springs or Biloxi. Okay. Uh, there, well. It was a, on the north side, the beach road, naturally, on the north side. There used to be, I guess it's still around here, it's called Po Boys. That was one place, and then there used to be a place called Doughboys that had some really good uh, subs and stuff like that. 
but uh, I, I can't think of any more. But I bought one of those presses here about a year ago, and this is a commercial press. Paid a thousand dollars for it, but uh, it it don't have the ridges in it for like a panini press. It's slick, and I, I bought it for all kind of reasons. Matter of fact, I'm gonna do it real soon, but. The, I've got a couple of videos doing quesadillas, but I've also got a Cuban sandwich video where I'm pressing those Cuban sandwiches with it. I Man, remember that. That, yeah. thing, that thing works great, but yeah. I want to make, I'm here before long, I want to do a recreation. Y'all know Taco Bell had that anchorita that just came out for like three weeks, and now, yeah. they, now they took it off their menu again. I want to recreate an anchorita, but I want to start from scratch. I want to do homemade tortillas, and you can do them on that. You take that dough ball, you put it on that on this sandwich press, and you press it down. It spreads it out, and it cooks it all at the same time. And then from there, I'm going to have my own anchorita or enchilada sauce is really all it is. But it's got to mm -hmm. match that color. And they use, like, tomato powders and stuff like that. And I saved two of the Taco Bell containers. We bought two of them in the last few weeks just to kind of – because it's been 10 years since they had them on their menu – and I want to recreate that, but really nail it. Not buy the canned enchilada or buy store bought tortillas. I want right. to take it. I want to make one way better, is what I'm trying to say, you know. But that's coming up at some point. I'm, I'll give it a few months. So I got other plans right now. Have you ever heard of uh, Cincinnati chili? Mm hmm. Okay. I've got a recipe for one that uh, I got off. I was. Looking at some somebody's channel, I think I was, no, I was live with them, and they said, go to this, and they put a link up for it, and it was a Cincinnati chili, and I, uh, I just clicked on it, open, t open link in new tab, yeah, and uh, I forget whose stream it was, and it was a. Uh, I, I looked at the link about two days later. I forgot about it, and I saw something up there in the tab. And I'm like, and I'm, oh yeah, it's it's a different. It's not a the, the way it is. They explained it. It's not a Texas style chili. Uh, that when they first came out, it's a Hungarian chili. It's Hungarians that came up with this recipe, and they would actually uh. That one guy had in 1920s or something. This guy actually had a hot dog, you know, uh, cart. That sounds like that sounds like Greek. Sounds like Greeks. Greeks were a big influence on those types of chilies in our country. Uh, you, hung, Hungarian uh, people that the, the immigrants, and they had developed this style of chili. And there's another culture that you know uh that had yeah. did it and it's this girl melissa something has this cookbook it's uh let me see i got the tab right here it's uh paleo you know like p-a-l-e-o paleo uh like that era uh oh, waiting for it to come up I was reading this comment, Anthony GM85 said so that press is called a panini press. Actually, a panini press has ridges in it. Mine is slick. It's a sandwich press. Uh, another word that's used for it is a plancha. A plancha can also be just a flat top griddle, but this is also referred to as a plancha, but it's double griddled. The top heats up at the same rate as the bottom of it. But now, if I had the other plates with the grooves, that would be a panini press. Yeah, okay, that's what the, I got for us, the panini press. The um, book yeah. is the book is well fed to uh, this girl Melissa something. Uh, see if I can get her name, and she looks Hungarian. <laughs> uh, I did I the Mac rib sandwich. I did that years ago, boneless, no. and I use real ribs. I didn't use that stuff McDonald's uses. Oh yeah, uh, Melissa Jewel J O U L W A N Jewel one. Uh, 
is her recipe, and it's got uh, like uh, coconut aminos in it. It's got cider vinegar, uh, cloves, allspice, cumin, cinnamon, and yeah. cocoa, and a uh, tablespoon of cocoa powder. Wait, where is that at? Uh, cocoa powder, where is it at? Where is it at? Uh, it's got chili powder, quarter cup. Oh, one tablespoon unsweetened cocoa, like Hershey's cocoa powder. And uh, like like I said, it's not your traditional Texas chili. Yeah, they layer it differently too. Um, and yeah, I'm, I'm not a big fan of cinnamon. I used to be when I was younger, but now I'm just, I don't know. I yeah, like right. it as long as it's in a cinnamon roll with lots of sugar. I don't like yeah. it. I don't like it cooked into a chili or something. I just don't care for that flavor. But yeah. them Greek, them Greeks do that. I've got a a Greek hot dog chili recipe, and I got some in the freezer vacuum pack. And that's the only thing I don't like about it. It's got too much of that that cinnamon type uh, allspice, uh, not allspice, but clove type yeah. taste and i can't i just, it don't agree with me for some I'm reason same way Russ. i'm the yeah. same way i don't know i mean it's good but i mean for some people but yeah there's yeah, very I little know. i used to like it when i was younger but now i just don't care for it you know? yeah there's only a, a teaspoon of it in there uh of you know all the exotic stuff yeah but i'm, I'm gonna try it one day you know and it's like two pounds of ground meat so ground beef so uh yeah, I had a you guy. Know, that, that's not that much for that amount of meat it, with all the other ingredients, you know. No, it's, it's got not. The it, tomato it, paste it, it, and it, some fresh yeah. tomatoes, you know. Right. Yeah, when it comes to chili, I guess I'm too American. I just want a lot of dried chili powders. Like I just recently took some of those hatched green chilies and I uh, dehydrated them and turned them into a powder then I'll get the regular chili powder like you buy in the store that's made from the um, anchos or whatever. You know, I'll, I'll take a variety of different chili powders and it doesn't get in that. Other, now it does get cumin, a little bit of cumin. You can overpower easily with cumin or cumin. Oh yeah. You know, yeah. And, uh, and that's it as far as any, any flavorings go other than salt and black pepper. But, uh, -oh. uh I'll tell, you, I'll tell you what there, Boo, I, for years, I mean, I grew up in Ohio, but I always thought Cincinnati chili was about the layers because they layer it with um, different, I don't know. Well, they do beans too, right? Like Yeah, you know, but they make like yeah, a hot no, dog. Well, no, you, no they, beans. they make the chili and then they layer it on top of different things. And I didn't oh, know, yeah. I didn't like know fresh cinnamon and all that crap on into it until recently, but. My yeah, they love. Pasta. I think they have pasta and cheese Ex and exotic you know, pasta. Yeah, they make like a giant plate. It's not like a bowl of chili. It's like a plate because right. they right. keep, they have different layers. You know, they have okay. one way, two way, three way, four way, five way, which I don't even know what all of them are. But that's kind of the way they do it. And when you think that, you think it's the way the chili's made, but it's not. It's the way it's, you know, it's kind of the way it's served actually. And I'm sure it's really good. You know, yeah. they have a they have a thing for uh, zucchini pasta, which is actually just very julienne <clears throat> sliced zucchini. You know? Yeah, I bet. Uh, I bet that's good. And yeah, you know, I love zucchini. You know, I love like zucchini bread. You know, I like I like making boats with zucchini. Uh, twice twice baked stuffed zucchinis. I have yeah, a I like recipe I made up for that. I like to fry I like fried green tomatoes, you know. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, that too. Yeah. Or fried pickles, man, I love them. Yeah. I uh I take a zucchini about about yay long, about that big around, and I boil <laughs> it uh for like four or five minutes, and then what I do, I take it out of the water, let it cool down a little bit, and I slice the top off of that zucchini, just a little cap of it. And then I take a spoon and I spoon all the zucchini meat out of that shell. And I, I'm keeping that shell. I don't want to tear it up. And I take that zucchini meat, put it in a bowl, add some cheese to it, like some three cheeses, the three uh, Mexican cheeses or what have you. And uh, like uh, 
uh, Monterey Jack, what have you. And then I'll take a bacon, crispy, crispy. I'll crumble that up, throw that in a bowl. Sausage, like Jimmy Dean sausage, uh, pork sausage, like, uh, and brown that all, all that down, crumble it up in the bowl, ground meat, crumble all that down. And then I'll mix all that up with the cheese and I'll put all that back in that shell and that zucchini boat. And then I'll top it with some cheese and I'll bake that for 20 minutes. Man, you talk about some fine eating right there. I bet. Uh, Sounds good. Well, look, guys, I'm going to get off of here. It's uh, I've done been on an hour and a half, and uh, there's another live feed I usually join into on Sunday nights. Okay. And, uh, I'm going to hop over there and just check them guys out. But it was Who good hanging going? out. Who are you going to? It's uh, it's called the uh, Goodfellow, Goodfellas. And it's split up between one, two, three different YouTubers. Tonight, I think it's 805 Barbecue Junkie. Is, I think I know him. It's on his I'm page. With him. He's a Mexican, uh, Hispanic guy. But he's okay. part of the Goodfellas. And they just bounce around different from you know different creators from one week to the next. Three of right. them. And they are the uh, Goodfellas. But I always join them every Sunday. But Brian was live a couple about three three or four nights ago brian uh deluxe lux that vacation guy oh uh, okay brian and uh dutch daddy was over there okay daddy dutch was uh on there and i popped in you know said hello in the chats and man they was thinking like yeah well uh brian had came in my stream last sunday when me and you were on uh in my live brian was in over here okay and uh and Daddy, Daddy Dutch, Dutch was like, man, that name sounds familiar. That name sounds familiar. I can't place it. <laughs> and uh, it was like, yeah, man, he was with Russ and all them uh, that one Friday after Thanksgiving and all. And he was like, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. That's a cool dude, man. You ought to hear him talk. <laughs> <laughs> I hear you. Well, have a good night, Russ. Yeah, man. Yeah. Good Russ, hang out. Good easy. seeing y'all. Take it easy, right. Rob, Bo. All right, Bo. Or, or Bo, I'm sorry. And Mater. <laughs> Take care, man. All right, later. Hey, Bo, Bo, I hate to crash the party, but yeah, I'm about ready to shut down. My grandson's about to show up here. And right. I thought he'd already be here by now. So we're, we're getting ready to eat and, uh, yeah, you know, hang out, watch some football. So I'm waiting yeah, on him. We uh, we doing a boneless stuffed chicken bake. That's what Miss is doing right now. She's tending to it a little yeah. bit. Does she take the bones out? No, uh, that was already done. Oh, okay. That was that That's what I got. That's, that. Move it to the side a little bit, Missy. Move to the side a little bit. <laughs> That's that stove I got right there. That's a eleven hundred dollar stove we got for three hundred. No nice. damaged in the back. It's got an air fryer built into it, a dehydrator built into it. You know, That's the settings and That's all that. That's gas. Oh yeah, look yeah, at the fire. I see that. The man. whole Ooh. top is nothing but grill. Great. That's awesome, man. The whole top. There's no metal. No solid thin metal like a, a stove with four burners. Yeah. This one's got the middle burner. It's got the huge front burner, that, that big Magnolite. That's not a Magnolite. That's a McWare. Uh, you're familiar with Big Lou Barbecue, huh? Over oh, here yeah. in the Ritter? Okay. Yeah. You remember he made that road trip to Mamu and was showing uh, all the pots and the big uh, uh, the big black iron round belly pots? And he okay. bought one for And he was doing some uh, kettle corn in it. His first time using it. Oh, yeah. Hey, Hector. Anyway, that's where that came from. Oh, cool. Guillory Wholesale, that place he went to. That's a McWare. Now, that's an old McWare right there. Oh, that one there is, uh, uh, that was, uh, I want to say that was probably about 30 years old. What's Missy got cooking in that? Uh, what you cooking in that? Oh, the red beans and rice. Oh, okay. Oh, that's the red beans. The other one, the other McWare pot. What is that? Oh, that's the chicken. Oh, that's okay. the baked chicken. 
<laughs> yeah, I didn't, said, I didn't think she was cooking beans in that pot. That'd been a lot of beans. When you said boneless, I thought you I thought you were talking about like a whole chicken that had been boned out. Yeah, it uh, has. Yeah, it I, has. I'll tell you what, I've been eating uh, pinto beans and ham all week, and I got down yeah. to like a little container I just put in the refrigerator a little bit ago. I the, love only bone, the only bone that this chicken has is in the wing tips. Like That's some, it. Uh, yeah. stuff you can just take it, and slice it across, you know, take it out, put it on a yeah. cutting block or whatever, slice it all the way across, and then you have all your different meats, your white meat, dark meat, what have you, when you get by the thigh and the drumstick. And uh, and the stuff with boudin. Right, what's the stuff with missing? Boudin? I'm not sure. I think some kind of sausage. I'm not sure. Oh, okay. Some uh, oh, pork, probably a mixture of uh, pork and beef sausage. Yeah. I mean, not sausage, but uh, ground pork, ground beef. Oh, yeah, it's uh, the one we had last time that we did was uh, uh, rice dressing. I mean, uh, boudin. Boudin, stuff with boudin. Man. And Russ was saying that earlier before you jumped in, he was saying that he wants to debone a chicken himself. Do a video yeah. on this. Debone that chicken himself and then make the boudin because he's he knows how to make his own boudin. Right. But do that, put that in a video and then stuff it and then cook it. That's a lot of footage. A lot of videotape footage right there to do that. You know, he, 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 I'll tell you he what, does Russ, some good, Russ, he does good editing though, you know? Yeah, he does. But I'll tell you what, he does the big jobs. I mean, he does, he'll work three or four days to make a video, you know? Oh yeah. I mean? Yeah. And then oh, edit man. all of that stuff, man. Yeah. I, I don't know who does. I don't know if he edited. Maybe he does all that. I don't know. But I mean, I mean, that's all, he is what he is, you know? But next, <laughs> you know next, what I mean? Next Sunday, when we get together like this, I'm on every Sunday, four to six now. Oh, okay. uh, some friends of mine in Florida, they, uh, they're they not far from the Florabama Flor line. Yeah. And uh, that's where they at over there, I think Niceville or something like that. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, you know, so they're not that, too terribly that far from you. No, it's a long way over there, Chief. Oh, you on the bottom? Yeah, you at what? No, Orlando? no, no. I'm on the top, but I'm on the east coast. You in Jacksonville or? Pretty much. Well, I, I sent Renegade's garage. He's a mechanic. It's uh, like six six he's hours. He's in Jacksonville. Over there. He's in Jacksonville. Yeah. Oh, okay. I don't know him, but it's like six hours over there to Pensacola almost. Oh, really? Yeah, it's I a long I didn't know it was that far. I, I didn't know it was that far. It's a long ride down I-10 with nothing but pine trees. Yeah. Oh, I've been there. Uh, <laughs> I, I used to go to Jay a lot. Jay, Florida, which is north of, uh, in between Pensacola and uh, Panama City Beach and all that. Yeah. I don't you remember go, Jay. You, Jay, it's up there, not far from Georgia. It's a little small community, but yeah. it got a lot of oil wells over there. A really? lot. Yeah, and that's what I used to do when I was driving truck. When I had my own truck, I was leased to a transport company, and yeah. I knew the tool pusher and the uh, the big dogs over there, huh. and uh, they would get me to to haul all the loads over there because I'd bring them uh, free tubes of skull, you know, yeah. dip dip yeah. free tubes of that, uh, anything the tobacco companies was giving away, yeah. you know, uh, I'd bring them all that too. And that guy, uh, the big shot over there, ended up, he owned Oscar uh, Corporation. And he ended up being uh, my grandson's uh, grandpa. You know, oh. He wasn't my father-in-law, but it was damn close to it. He said that was J, Florida? Yeah. I'll have to look that up. Yeah. It's uh, above Pensacola and all that toward the Georgia line. Oh, it's so, a, way over there, though. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Yeah, it's like uh, you pass Pensacola a little ways, and then you you hit one of these main roads or whichever yeah. one you can get off the interstate on, and head and north, north, and yeah, head and north. then okay. you know find it around in that area somewhere. That's how I had to do it back then. We didn't have GPS and all that crap. We had to oh, look I at know. a map. We had to look <laughs> at a map. Back in and the paper map days. Yeah, and stop at a store <laughs> and say, 
you know, I'm looking for this this area right here. What's the best way to get to it? You know, yeah. or and yeah. So yeah, I know what you mean, man. <laughs> I know what you mean. Yeah. But yeah, man, I'm going to shut down because my grandson, I thought he'd already be here, but they're coming over. We're going to have dinner and all that, watching the football game. But I had a good time, man. I appreciate you inviting all me. All right, Rob. Next I Sunday. Know you did, I didn't know you did the Sunday night thing. So I'll, well, I'll, I'll, like I'll I was telling you, you uh, Pudding Tang and them in Florida, I went live one Sunday afternoon just to show something off or something. I forgot. And they said, uh, boo, cause they've been following me for 11 years now. Oh, these wow. people. And I kind of fell off the map for a little while, you know, while I was in the hospitals and stuff. Yeah. And, uh, you know, a month hospital state, you know, you kind of get, you know, get lost out of the woodwork there. And they were asking me, Oh, there's Mater and crystals uh, cooking. That's Mater right there. Yeah. And his wife. I got to subscribe but to him. I got to go they, find him. All right. Well, it's right there. Oh, you know what? Make a comment in the chat. I'm going to do you something and it'll bring you right to his channel. All right. I'll do all it right, right now. Because I think you made me a moderator on your channel. There it is. Okay. I'm going to give you a, a, a blue wrench. Okay. Now. Look to the right, hover your mouse, your cursor to the right of Mater, Mater and Crystal's channel. You're going to see three dots. You click on them three dots, and at the top, it'll say, go to channel. All right. And just click on it, and it'll, it'll bring you straight to their channel. That way, you ain't got to look them up. All right. There it is. I hit subscribe. Uh, anyway, it was a pudding tang to people in Florida. They wanted to know, is this going to be a regular every Sunday thing? You know, we miss y'all. We miss you and Missy. They used to send us stuff from Florida. And, uh, you know, as you gifts. Say they're stuff. in Jacksonville? No, they in, uh, Niceville over there. Oh, they're Niceville. Not, they're to the east of, uh, the Florabama line. All know? right. All right. Yeah. Over there in that area. Ain't no dots on my phone, David Carlisle said. You sure, we, David? It, um, we, hey, we got... Oh, uh, no, you click on their name. That's what it is. You click on their name on a phone, iPhone. But anyway, so they asked me if I was going to do this every Sunday. <clears throat> and there's Puddin' Tang right there, speak of the devil. <laughs> now, where Puddin' Tang, where y'all at over there? Because he's in Jacksonville or around that area. Yeah, I'm, in, or or I'm in Orange Park. It's called Orange okay. Park. Right. I'm not sure where okay, I know uh, Renegades from Jacksonville. Yeah, that's what I was mentioning. I mentioned earlier yeah. Renegades over there, and I guess he's busy because I sent him a link. He's usually here on my lives all the time. I guess they they typing it in now with town they yeah. in. But so I said, yeah, you know that's a good idea, and uh, go live like that and. Sometimes I might I might be starting to do it on a Wednesday also, uh, early Wednesdays, because Mater goes live Wednesday night. Country Mile Garage, Theo, how you doing, Mona Me? Uh, tonight, uh, I'll be on yours tonight. I, I don't think I'm going to have any company tonight. Just Johnny will be here, but he's not company. He almost lives here. So you yeah. know you know Puddin' Tang? Yeah, Pudding Tang, there they are. Yeah, yeah. My brother, his, lives his in, brother lives in Clay County. That's where I live. Yeah. But Clay they County. and uh yeah. they ride there around I want to say Niceville. All right. Riches, mowers, and blowers. What's up, Mona Me? Right. We're gonna be going to uh 25 minutes. We're gonna be going giving Puller Bear Ed's Garage a raid. Yep. Cajun yeah, raid. Matter of fact, I'm fixing to bounce out oh. of here. I gotta You're get this put in and get first I gotta get the other one pulled out. Now what I'm making I know I've had a couple of comments is uh Ray Jean, you remember when I was talking about my mom almost burning the house down a couple of times? Oh yeah, you um, made that little her. gate to keep her out, the kitchen. I, I built that well that that was always supposed to be temporary, supposed until I had something better, you know, put there. 
well, that's already coming apart. So it's like, okay, I'm taking basically the same wood and I'm making something better. And this one here is a lot stiffer, stronger and everything. So I'm going to get that put in. And I got, of course, got to get the other one out first before this one can go in. Try and get that done before uh, Ed goes live. All right. Yeah, they, uh, by Destin, Okaloosa County. Uh, I might get the camcorder set up and record it. I've, I've got this one built, and I've got another section that's going to go on top. That way, it, the whole half the side. Right. All right. Well, let me get this thing inside. And I got. I had to switch out batteries on my impact driver. That way, I got plenty of power. Oh yeah, you've been doing you've been doing that for a couple of hours now. So that yeah. impact could take more of a battery than a regular drill. Yeah, but concerning in fact that was on that little two amp hour battery. It's been going that long. It's only That's down to one bar. Right. So I mean. Yeah, but it's not like you don't have twenty of those batteries. You know. <laughs> I got twenty six of them. Twenty six. Okay. Yeah, twenty six of them. <laughs> and a lot of cobalt tools. A lot of cobalt too. Yep. All right, let me get in there that way I can get that other one pulled out. That way this one can go in. And okay. Just stick around. Up. Stick around. Uh, like I said, I'm going to be bouncing out of here. So I'll see you over, Dad. Oh, okay. All right, then. Oh, yeah, that's right. You got to go in the house. All right. Yeah, I got yeah, to go in okay. the house. So I yeah. Be out yeah. I, well, it, it hit me. <laughs> All right, I'll see you. Nice to see you, right. Rob. Blue tie. You see you later. Nice to meet you, man. All right. William I. What's up? Walmart Willie. How you doing, William? I'll tell hey, you what, boo. I got I got to run, bud. My grandsons, I think they're just pulled in. So all right, buddy. Uh I appreciate you inviting me and uh hope next Sunday, you. no problem. I'll I want I want to see that that little pot belly stove you have on there. So I'm gonna I'm going to be commenting on that video. Well, I appreciate it, man. Anybody can come over and look at that and tell me what to think. It's from the 1930s. I mean, that's that's the last time my dad seen it being used, so it's probably older than that. But, yeah. You know. And there's, uh, there's Rob's link in the chat. I just posted it in there. I and appreciate he's it, he's got a He's got an awesome, awesome uh, grilling videos barbecue <laughs> grilling smoking he's got different styles of pits and such as and uh and yeah he's got he's got his little buddy there his helper that his taste tester old his dude. faithful his faithful dog duke to help him do that <laughs> all right so, brother and, i appreciate you man we'll talk when y'all see week. the when y'all see the puppy dog y'all know why you know that's the other half of the channel name. All right, Rob. Catch All you next right, Sunday, buddy. All right. All right blue Y'all be good. Very close to Elton Air Force Base. I know where that's at. I passed uh, not far from there a few times when I was truck driving. 60 miles east, we in Panama. I got a friend of mine that's from here in Eunice, this town that lives in Panama City Beach. And he can throw a rock and hit the water from his house. And when that hurricane hit that devastated uh, Mexico Beach, Mexico City Beach over there or something, to the east of uh, Panama City, uh, he didn't, I mean, it, the, the water was 15 foot high, 20 foot high in that town over there. and and parts east but in panama city beach there was nothing no water in the houses nothing there was on the good side of the eye that's why he only had like uh two shingles came off his roof that was it he took his deep freezers his refrigerator uh he took all that with him on a trailer and went north to a friend of his that lived up by the georgia line 
which is about what 80 100 miles or whatever up there or more 120 miles and left the deep freezer and the refrigerator two deep freezers on his trailer and they just plugged him in uh with an ex extension cords at his friend's house and he did all that for nothing because he, he never got no water no damage no nothing from that and that was a powerful hurricane so how y'all been rich and william tim i hadn't seen you in a while tim like you know in other streams i mean like uh uh top conquer you know all the other uh small engine guys yeah no it wasn't michael though it wasn't michael it was uh i i know uh i forget where michael made landfall couldn't tank where did michael make landfall exactly hey pat paulson what's up mona me uh, a little chilly today pat i think you let's see uh it was in the low 60s today uh you know a little drizzle and stuff rain so it wasn't that bad no nasty weather you know nothing real nasty like uh last week when we had all that wind and all that stuff uh when that cold front was coming through finally warmed up over there a little bit okay yeah it was i forget which hurricane it was that flooded it was only about three three or four years ago and but uh panama city was spared everything to the east of it though was uh bad wiped out i was in top conquer stream last night up on town oh okay that's right it was nighttime for y'all over there because y'all in the uk that would be like one o'clock in the afternoon my time here y'all six hours difference than i am hector mona me mi amigo how you been hadn't seen you in a little while I'd get you up here, Hector, in the panel. Uh, yeah, let me let me see if I could uh, send you a link real quick. Oh, wait, let me know if you want to come up. Pat, you too, if you want to come up for a few minutes. Because at 6 o'clock, we're going to go over to Puller Bear Ed's live stream. Ready for the fall. I don't know if we're gonna be getting any fog. We don't get a lot of fog up here in units. Uh, on the coast. Oh boy, that's a different story now. Oh, dinner's on the stove. Okay. Well, that's good. You come up for a bit. Uh what? Temporary unavailable. Gmail is unavailable. Refresh that. Here we go. All right. That was just a little error. <laughs> it probably was unavailable. Yeah, I caught the tail end of it. Let me get my send out box up here. My computer's running a little slow today. Lots of fog where Hector and I are. Oh, okay. I got you. All right. There you go. Pat Paulson and uh, Hector. Just check y'all emails. Uh, yeah, I'm a lot better, uh, Tim. Grass cutter Palmer, I'm a lot better. Uh, I got a cold right now. 
uh, like a little head cold, blowing stuff out the nose, coughing some stuff up, you know. Uh, you know, it's it's nothing major, though. You know, I'm not running fever or nothing like that. So, it's you know, I don't have any respiratory infection like that comes with a lot of head colds and sinus infections and all that. I don't have none of that. Mr. Hector. Hey, hey, hey. How you doing? No. Oh, bien bon. Bien bon. It's hey, all. Again. So what's the, I hear that you're doing better. Yeah. Yeah. That After that, since that second uh, surgery or uh, procedure, you know, after my gallbladder was taken out, uh, man, I've <laughs> been eating too much. Man. <laughs> eating too much i gotta slack off on that oh really which i mean i'm trying to gain my weight back because i lost like 25 pounds well, during my last some. in that that month of two hospital stays and you know a little break in between plus mm. i couldn't eat anything for a while and especially in the hospital because for two and a half weeks i was in po the only thing i had coming in me was uh uh Fluid, IV stuff, IV fluids, and all that. So, uh, after the gallbladder surgery, then I went in for another procedure. After that, it was a, a ERCP, which is uh, to check for stones. You know, they go inside and check your bile ducts and all that, see if there's any gallstones in there, you know, because that's that would be a life threatening situation. How much is a one ounce silver bar? That's 0.999 pine silver worth. Uh, I don't know the price of silver right now. It's probably 25 bucks, but it's worth at least that melt value. And I don't know what bar it is, if it's sunshine mint or if it's uh, uh, JM Bullion, uh, trade, trade brand on it, or... Uh, Oh, what's that other one? Uh, and if money be here, he can tell you right quick. There's another brand of uh, uh, another mint that makes bars, and they are uh, uh, premium. They have a lot more premium than like a regular generic silver bar. Sunshine Mint's a good one, though, because they, they, they have the security feature on it, too, on their bars. But it's worth at least 25 bucks. Okay. Okay, Pat. That or, you know, meet us after a while, because I'll be another 10, 15 minutes on here, and we're all going to give uh, Puller Bear Ed, uh, Puller Bear Ed's Garage a raid. Let's see. Let me. In fact, I gotta get the link up. Well, they haven't uh, been around since we've been doing some projects in the house. Some what? July. We've been doing some projects around the house since July, and we've oh, been taking okay. care of our grandkids a little bit more. What about the farm? How's the farm doing? The ranch? Yeah, it's doing good. It's doing good. Okay. Y'all. Trying to get some rain on the pasture. Oh, okay. Yeah, for the cattle to feed on. Yeah. Yeah, we had about an inch and a half since Saturday. Rain? Yeah. Oh, good. Finally. We just have to some tonight and then Friday also. I mean, Pat's not very far from me. I, I was wondering if he was, uh, if his reservoirs were getting all filled up because we have these reservoir basins around the neighborhoods. Oh, okay. So they're getting filled up because we're we're just too dang dry, too dang what they call dry as a bone. Yeah. Well, this past summer and spring, y'all had got a bunch of liquid sunshine, huh? Mm, it's still short though. Okay, because I know part like in Vegas, Nevada, and certain other parts of California, uh, and they. They got a lot of rain. They got more than they wanted, put it that way. Because <laughs> of the flooding. Because of the flooding. Well, we have, we've rarely, well, 
it depends on which year, but we have a ski uh, resort up here called China Peak. Um, and it barely got two really good snowstorms. And they've got a 50 inch base with uh, probably another 30 to 40 inch on top of that. David Carlisle says that it is 2327. Is that spot? Yeah, melt value. How much is it? 27 right now? 20, 2327. Oh, 2327. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. That'll work. Thank you, David. Yeah, I just put a whole new floor from the hallway to the living room. Dining area, kitchen, uh, dining ceramic, area. ceramic, no. or no, we wood? put laminate. Oh, laminate. Oh, okay. Uh, sheet laminate. No, uh, what they like, call those locking those locking boards, the four right, footers. right. Okay, four footers. Okay, mm -hmm. got you, got you. I know exactly what you're talking about. Yeah, it came out to sixty-two boxes. Oh, wait a minute, the laminate. Okay, mm -hmm. laminate. Now you're not talking about vinyl, right? Talking about wood, wood laminate. No, it's a no. It's it's a vinyl laminate. Okay, all right. Well, we we have you know. Good. It's it's not. It's well. Put it this way. It's impervious to water. <laughs> yeah. It's not going to swell up and all that when uh, a cup of coffee spills on it in the kitchen. Yeah, we put sixty-two boxes of it, and each box covers twenty square feet. Right. I'm Randy Tarboli, how you doing, Mona Me? Uh, wait, that is melt. Uh, that don't mean you can buy it or sell it for that price. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. right, David. He was asking $275. That must be a 10 ounce bar then. That has to be a 10 ounce bar to be that price. And, uh, the, uh, the rest of it's premium. You know, like just say twenty four bucks an ounce, and he's one two seventy five. That's twenty seven fifty an ounce for a ten ounce bar. Now, just make sure it's a reputable guy you're buying from too, because they do have some fake bars out there. Renegade, what's up, Mona Me? Man, you just missed two people not far from where you live up in here. Like a barbecue pit dog, he's right there in uh, Orange Park by Jacksonville. He was up in the panel. We were talking food and cooking tonight, mostly. Andrew agrees. Exactly true. Exactly true. I was close to you there, um, Cajun. Yeah, you Jeez. said you were in San Antonio or something, huh? No, I was in Fort Worth. Fort Worth. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, that's about uh uh six hours, something like that. Maybe um, not even that. Maybe not even that. Look from me to San Diego, that would be a six hour drive to San Diego. What happened to my link? Oh, there it is. Yeah. Uh in about five or ten minutes, we're gonna be giving polar bear ed a raid i just put the link up i'm going to put it again it's just going to be the link it won't be his name and we're going to go give him a raid and tell him you know when you type in say hi to ed say hello ed cajun raid you'll let him know where y'all came from as a matter of fact uh, i think we're supposed to meet um one of these days uh god willing Pat and I are supposed to meet up and go to a a car uh, place where he's he knows the guy already. It's called Z Car Garage. He's okay. uh, he's into building cars, so. Okay. Like Does he have a YouTube channel? Uh, actually, it's a guy by the name of Chen. I can't remember his channel, but he did. Uh, um, he had a Z, and he had the guy. Um, his name is Rob. I can't remember the guy's last name. He has a garage. But, man, he does some nice work on those cars. 
try to find out if he got a YouTube channel and you know, join up with him. Well, Pat's in here. He knows him. I guess he can do that. Uh, uh, well, uh, he said he had to go do something. So yeah, he's oh, Renegade said, yeah, my daughter lives in Orange Park. Okay. Yeah, I sent you a link about five hours ago, Renegade. Come up and join in. Yep, see y'all in Pull a Bear in a few. In fact, he's going live about now. He is live right now. So, all right, everybody. Uh, Hector, you want to do your outro? Say your goodbyes to everybody. Well, well, everybody have an, an. Hope you guys all had a nice Thanksgiving. But this is uh, my rarely uh, online <laughs> come up in the panel. But everybody has a good Christmas. If I don't see anyone uh, online in the future, and if I do see, please say hi. And this is time for me to say goodbye and go have some dinner. I'm having caldo de res, Mexican beef soup. That'll work. Hey, uh, next Sunday, keep an eye out for a link. Okay. At 4, four o'clock next Sunday, okay. we're going to be talking cooking again with Russ and barbecue. And I'd like you to put your Mexican uh you know, food up in there too, you know, okay. you know, talk about it and stuff. And, uh, Russ likes Mexican food also. Uh, in fact, he was talking about this type of sour cream, Mexican crema or something. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's like a thin sour cream. Do you, do you know those, um, real quick before I leave, and I would say goodbye to everybody later, uh, I assume, um, that when you're talking about cooking, I just saw a guy use, Vel Velvetina, it's a Mexican hot sauce. That's a like a red paste, but kind of liquidy, to clean a copper kettle. Man, it cleaned it up like a slick whistle. Oh yeah, the the acid in there. Yeah, it's a, it's a that that sauce is uh, acidic. Yeah, and it, yeah, that'll clean clean pots up real good. Well, let it set for like two three seconds, and all of a sudden I start wiping it down, and then where I poured it first. It was like, caught wow. like you wouldn't believe. Man, this is better than dawn any day. <laughs> <laughs> okay, everybody. Pat Paulson, we'll see you around. Everybody in the chat, yeah. thank you. Talk to you guys later. Yeah, good everybody, good seeing y'all again. I'm glad y'all got to saw me again. I'm glad I got to saw y'all again. And as always, look, it's always good being north to the grass. Be safe, stay that way. And as always, love, peace. And crackling grease, and we'll catch y'all later. Pluto. Pull a bear head, Reed.